everyone in this video we'll discuss about forced damped vibration now we already know that the forced vibrations they are the result of continuous external forces that act on a body and they are quite different from the natural vibrations in which the force is applied only once and the body is allowed to vibrate on its own freely but earlier we have already done the analysis when damping was not taken into consideration while uh, studying forced vibrations so when we take into consideration damping we call it as the forced damped vibrations now what happens at all the real systems they have got some amount of damping uh, the damping amount or you know it may be quite small but even the you know that small uh, damping forces they may affect the system they may affect the response of the system especially in the situation around resonance and what is resonance when omega the working frequency is equal to the natural frequency of the system therefore it is quite uh, important to investigate the theoretical model of the damped forced vibrations so what we have done we have taken a simple mass damper and spring lumped uh, system right and on this the external force is being applied and the force that we are using is f not cos omega t we are taking into consideration the harmonic force so if we draw the free body diagram and if we write the equation the equation will be in this way if we say that the displacement is in terms of x which is a function of time so velocity will be x dot and acceleration will be x double dot right so the equation becomes if the body starts moving in this direction let's say because of the so the resultant of all these three forces will give the equation m x double dot is equal to f not cos omega t minus c x dot minus s x so if we take all the terms on one hand and keep the force term on other hand this is the equation that we get now if we divide whole equation by m this is the what we'll get which will be x double dot plus c upon m x dot plus s upon m x is equal to f not upon m cos omega t now these terms c upon m and s upon m where c is the damping coefficient and s is the spring stiffness or spring coefficient so c upon m if we multiply c c which is the damping critical damping coefficient right so if we multiply it in numerator denominator that is not going to change the equation and c c can also be written as 2 under root s upon m which we have already derived while doing the damped vibrations and c upon c that is the ratio of damping coefficient to the ratio of critical damping coefficient is denoted by zeta which is the damping ratio so and in this part what is omega n omega n is under root s upon m so we can convert c upon m and write it as 2 zeta omega n now s upon m we know omega n is under root s upon m so s upon m will become omega n square so if we place these two equation uh, factors in equation 1 the equation becomes this which is x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n square x is equal to f not m upon m into cos omega t now we have to solve this equation and find the values so if i want to find the value of displacement for this equation the displacement will be x is equal to x which is the amplitude cos omega t now one thing we have to keep in mind that whatever is the harmonic or whatever is the function that we choose for force the same function defines the displacement of the body right so x is the displacement x is the amplitude and because in force we have taken cos omega t therefore it becomes x cos omega t now this is also not certain that when damping is there the phase of uh, displacement and force will remain the same even though harmonic remains the same but their phase might 
differ and what is phase difference it is basically to describe the difference uh, in two or more alternating quantities right so uh, when force is there displacement will follow therefore there may be some uh, phase lock therefore we are defining or we are describing displacement as x cos omega t minus phi so this is the phase lock if we assume that let's say this is the uh, wave for this is the curve for uh, force fx and if this is the displacement so the phase log is this difference right which is denoted by phi so the equation for displacement becomes this so if this is displacement velocity will be minus omega x sin omega t minus phi and acceleration will be minus omega square cos omega t minus phi so placing these values of displacement velocity and acceleration in equation number 2 this is the equation that we get right so this is x double dot acceleration it becomes minus omega square x cos omega t right x is there and minus this remains same 2 zeta omega n and x dot we'll write the value of x dot which is in negative right similarly omega n square x so we we'll place the value of x and uh, rhs remains the same now what we are going to do is we are going to apply the trigonometric functions and expand these formula which is cos a minus b sin a minus b let's assume and cos omega t minus phi or maybe cos a minus b so we know the formula so cos omega t minus phi becomes cos omega t cos phi plus sin omega t sin phi sin omega t minus phi becomes sin omega t cos phi minus cos omega t sin phi and cos omega t minus phi it becomes cos omega t cos phi plus sin omega t sin phi and rhs remains the same so in this equation if we compare the components of cos omega t and sin omega t on lhs and rhs so firstly we'll do it for cos omega t so there are three terms of cos omega t this which is minus omega square x cos phi then this term which is minus minus becomes plus so 2 zeta omega and omega x sin phi and this term which is x omega n square cos phi into x which is equal to and if we look at the rhs this is the factor of cos omega t which is f not upon m similarly we can balance the factors of or the components of uh, sin omega t so this term this term and this term so these three terms are the fact uh, components of sin omega t so we can write them and if you look at the rhs side there is no component of sin omega t so it becomes equal to 0 so from this equation if we take this factor minus 2 zeta omega and omega cos phi on rhs it becomes positive and from the remaining two factors we can take sin phi common so this is the value we get so sin phi upon if we take this cos phi on again on lhs it becomes 10 phi which is equal to 2 zeta omega and omega upon omega n square minus omega square now if we multiply and divide the whole equation by omega n so it becomes 2 zeta and we know omega upon omega n is r which is also called as frequency ratio so omega upon omega n becomes r and the denominator becomes 1 minus r square and from this equation in which we balanced cos omega t factor we can find the value of x which is the amplitude maximum amplitude for the uh, displacement so it becomes f not upon m upon all the other factors right all all the factors because we have just taken x common so it becomes omega n square minus omega square cos phi because there are two terms for cos phi plus 2 zeta omega and omega sin phi now what we'll do we'll take cos phi common from the denominator so if we take cos phi common right so and multiply okay it has common factor this becomes 10 phi and we also already know the value of 10 phi so we can replace 10 phi with 
2 zeta r upon 1 minus r square. Now what to do with this cos phi? If you apply the trigonometric relationship that cos phi is equal to 1 upon sec phi and sec is under root 1 plus 10 square phi. So again we know the value of 10 phi. We can place the value of 10 phi and place the value of cos phi in this equation. So this is the magnitude of the amplitude that we get for this equation and from here we get a new term which is magnification factor and this magnification factor is the ratio of amplitude of steady state response that we have calculated here and why steady state response because for the function for the harmonic function that is uh, that acts on the body initially the vibrations are the free vibrations right. And after some time when they settle down the effect of the forced vibrations only the effect of forced vibrations is there initially it is free plus forced so once the effect of free vibrations it dies out then we call it as the steady state and before that we call it as the transient phase right so this is the amplitude when we are talking about the steady state response to static deflection what we mean by static deflection if there is a mass on which some force F0 is being applied and this mass is connected to spring of some stiffness S. So with the application of this force what happens this spring it gets deflected and its deflection is given by what F0 upon S right. So this is the value that we have used in this equation and these two gets cancelled out so this is the value of magnification factor and it is dependent upon two things which is omega upon omega n and zeta. So if we plot a graph between magnification factor and frequency ratio we see that when as the frequency ratio approaches the value 1 that means omega is equal to omega n. So we usually say that when these things happen, when uh, this is the condition of resonance. So what happens? The amplitude, it reaches the infinite values, right? But in practical applications, magnification factor, it cannot reach infinity because there is friction. So the friction, it dampens out the vibration. And secondly, there is a limit to which the uh, amplitude of vibration can reach for a for any machinery uh, it cannot go beyond that limit what can happen is that it, it will damage or it will stop working but it won't go beyond that limit so we see that there are no infinite values there are all finite values second observation we uh, make that as the zeta increases right zeta is increasing in this way so as the zeta increases the ma maximum value of magnification factor it decreases and vice versa so zeta is increasing this way magnification factor is decreasing this way it is actually increasing in the opposite order or in the opposite direction and we also see that the maximum values of magnification factor this is this graph is showing the maximum value it is this graph is showing the maximum values for different uh, damping ratios for the different damping factors so in most of the cases we see that the maximum magnification factor is achieved when frequency ratio is bit less than that of the one so we plot a graph between phase angle and five and frequency ratio r which is omega upon omega n we see that when this omega upon omega n is zero phase angle is also zero when omega upon omega n is 1, phase angle is 90 degree or pi by 2. And when this omega upon omega n or the frequency ratio, it is it changes, it is less than 1 or it is between 0 to 1. Phase angle is also between 0 to 90 degree. And when it increases from 1, the phase angle also increases from 90 to 180. So for small damping, that is when zeta is less than 0.1 we see that the phase lag it varies rapidly for small changes.